Hi everybody. Here we are on Main Street in Colorado. And guess what it is? We're right on April 8th and the world has not closed down. You know, Oscar and I have been doing mayoral things now for 21 years. And we've seen some low times, but I'll tell you something. We're gonna be just fine. We've been there before, we know what to do. And to be right here, right now, is so exciting. It was supposed to be raining today, but not in Las Vegas, not in the core of our city, our phenomenal city. Do you know something? All roads come together downtown. We're the center of government, our court system, the county building, the city building. But more than that, we're all about having a great time. Our restaurants, our pubs, our taverns, the antique shops, the clothing shops. And what's been happening while we've been closed down here, look at the artwork. We're a creative bunch of people that love Las Vegas and are absolutely enthused by any challenge we get. So you take a look down Main Street where we have these wonderful nighttime twinkling lights and it's a gathering place for restaurants and having a good drink, a brewery, even an antique shop. But we're still here and we're getting ready to reopen. So I want you to take a look and you're gonna get a special tour. Melissa from our public information is gonna tour you around and so you're getting to see the fine artwork that has been all the shuttered buildings the people have created. These are people who are coming to us and say, we want to be part of this revitalization. So I want to also tell you a couple of things. Right around the corner, we're in 18B, the Arts District, and culture is alive and well in Las Vegas. Around the corner is Symphony Park, and guess what's there? Our phenomenal Smith Center. It's the home to our Philharmonic. It's the home to our Nevada Ballet. Broadway shows, lecture series, opera, and beyond that, it's a home to our museums. We have the wonderful Children's Interactive, and that is gonna be open again soon. We have our Organized Crime Museum, the Mob Museum. We have the History, the Natural History Museum, which is part of our Tule Springs Fossil Park. We have the Neon Boneyard that you can visit. And that I can tell you, even if you drive by now while we're shut down, you can see some of those fabulous, fabulous pieces of collective Neon Museum pieces from years past. So it's a wonderful time. We're gonna visit the Fremont East Entertainment District. You can walk through if you're out and about walking your pooch or taking a six foot extension with somebody, it's a friend, take a look at what's downtown. We're so ready for this to be over with. And we know we've already come such a long way, all of us participating together because we love Las Vegas. And we are a phenomenal group of people. And wait till you see what our hotels are gonna be doing. The restaurants that are in the hotels, whether it's the Plaza or soon to be the Circa, uh, the Golden Nugget, Golden Gate, the D, the Grand, the Cal, Fremont. There's so much going on here and don't forget our Springs Preserve. That's just a little further away. You can get there on foot. So this is a time to be excited about what's coming and know you can be part of it. You can be part of the enthusiasm and excitement that we've always known as Las Vegas. So stay with me, take this tour with Melissa. You're gonna be so surprised everything that you're gonna see and we are alive and well. So we're proud of it. We're proud of your help. We're proud of all the truckers that are bringing in all of this curbside groceries and all the liquor and everything else that's being sold curbside. Any of the restaurants that have a drive-through, all the things that we're permitted to do by the mandates from the governor. We're doing them and we're doing them so well and so creatively. Thank you for participating and know we're all together in this and we are gonna come out with a bang. It's not the hustle and bustle we're used to seeing in downtown Las Vegas. 
As the coronavirus battle rages on in our community, the spirit of Las Vegans blazes on as well. This community has a way of showing up and pulling through, lending a helping hand to each other in times of crisis. Business owners across Las Vegas continue to find ways to reinvent themselves to keep their businesses going. 7th and Carson owner Liam Dwyer is one of the many restaurant owners looking for ways to move forward. He initially closed his restaurant when the COVID-19 pandemic first hit, but is now open for business. His chef and a few other employees are also back at work. Obviously with a, with a pandemic you have, no, you have no choice. You've been directed by the governor to, to close down the restaurant, you have to close down. Uh, we were obviously the downtown was doing very, very well prior to that point. Now all the restaurants are closed. We all want to get back open as quickly as possible while keeping our, st our, ta our staff and our customers safe. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very fine line we walk, but we feel now we can get ourselves back on the ground and prepare for the relaunch of Las Vegas, which will happen imminently. If, if the city didn't, didn't approve the curbside with alcohol, we wouldn't have reopened. It just doesn't make sense financially from, from a food standpoint to do curbside. The alcohol, when you can move a little alcohol, you can make a little more money, and it makes, it makes sense to, have, to bring your staff back on board and get them back off unemployment and back to work proper. He's gotten the word out about his reopening to as many places as possible, and now he waits for locals to show up for him. But now, because there's no strip customers, there's no one walking down Fremont Street, or Las Vegas Boulevard for that matter, we need to, apply, we need to rely on our locals 100%. So we just need to get the, the uh, information out to the people that we are open, we are doing curbside, we have some grocery, we have some liquor, and we have some food. So it saves people, if they don't want to travel to the, lo the local grocery store, they can walk out of their buildings, come down here, order online, and pick it up. But his belief in our community is strong. It's something he saw when our city bounced back after 9-11, and he has no doubt the community will come through again. This will take a little bit longer, because there's a lot more, it's a global pandemic. But it will come back. Vegas is a great experience. It's a great value for money, and it'll come back, I believe, stronger than before. Liam is just starting his journey to reopen, but other restaurants like Bocho Sushi are still fighting. Gabe Jaramillo is the executive chef at Bocho Sushi. His staff has been furloughed. They're doing a fifth of the business he's used to, but he's still here every day, working, waiting, and hoping. Right now, we just have the word out with, uh, you know, a lot of our regulars. There aren't very many people downtown that are still open, so we get a lot of our downtown folks are still coming by. It's still, it's very minimal. It's, you know, it's us barely getting by down here and trying to, to serve what we can. We put together several menus that are uh, more like family style and that people can come and pick up and that are also available through the delivery services. The, um, those menus are available online and on Grubhub, Postmates, that kind of thing. Doña Maria's is also open for business. The business on Las Vegas Boulevard has its okay days and its bad days, but manager Rafael Ruiz says they won't give up. Their downtown location is slow, but their northwest location is seeing a lot of support. We offer only takeout, and because we try to you know, to help the people because we got 40 years in Vegas and the customer there always win us and we pretend, you know, to, if they want something to take out, we are here and sometimes it's busy, sometimes it's not really busy, but we try. One of the new ways the city has tried to help is by allowing businesses to serve alcohol for curbside purchase and delivery. Certain rules apply, of course, and a permit must be obtained but it's another avenue to explore. Rebar owner Derek Stonebarger took advantage of the opportunity and created Boardwalk Liquors. So this is literally from two days of orders. Um, it, it, it obviously shows that there was a need. And if you think about it, every one of these bottles, beers, wines, this Jack Daniels Sinatra, this all just created tax revenue for somebody. So it's gonna, it, 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 we're just excited to be back doing something and helping fill a need. And we're doing it safely, we're practicing social distancing. We're kind of creating all of Main Street as a board, or it's called Boardwalk Liquors because of all the boards that have been painted, but it's also considered a drive-through. You literally pull up in your car, I'll have my staff walking the block and they'll talk to people and you don't even have to get out of your car. 
Derek says he needed to find a way to reinvent himself and quickly. One of the items that we decided to go for, we used to sell a charcuterie board. Uh, we made it here in our kitchen and uh, now we're selling it in a vacuum sealed pre-packaged to go. So you can pick this up at our bodega along with your beer, wine or alcohol. Take that home and have a nice little, maybe that's a nice little Easter meal for somebody, who knows. He says he's trying to bring hope to an unfamiliar situation. Local artist Isaac Zavalkin is also working around the clock to spread the message of hope. He is now a major part of what's been named Main Street Boardwalk. A lot of the artwork you see on boarded up businesses is his. Yeah, I have a gallery on Main and uh, Charleston next to uh, Makers and Finders there. Um, and when this was all announced, we boarded up the gallery. I wrote a long list of tasks to do during the shutdown and I haven't got to any of them because I've been either here or at Fremont East painting storefront murals every day or at home prepping for murals. So yeah, it's been unexpectedly busy. It's uh, already such a difficult situation for everybody. Having everything boarded up really adds to that like dystopia. So at least this is like, oh, we're making something of it. People can cycle up and down or walk up and down when they're getting out of the house and be uplifted a little bit. For me, it's about maintaining my sanity and art is the best form of therapy for a lot of people, myself included. So being able to get out here and pain and see the occasional person really helps not feeling so isolated. There's even plans for this artwork when life returns to normal. The plan is to auction all the boards off to the artists or to people that have been affected economically by this crisis. And while everyone hopes this crisis will end soon, nobody really knows for sure. For now, we rely on each other to stay safe, to lend support, and to pick each other up when we're down. Well, here we are. I hope you've enjoyed this tour. We're so proud of everything that's going on downtown. You can see behind me the famous decades old El Cortez. You can see right here we're at Container Park and we're at Fremont and 7th. There's so much going on and we're so ready to be coming back. And we want to thank everybody that comes down here, takes a meal somewhere, either curbside or a pass drive through. There is life here, but it's gonna be ever fat, more fabulous than ever, ever before. So know that we appreciate your support. Give our businesses all that they can handle. It keeps our families employed, and it keeps the very heartbeat of the historic city of Las Vegas alive and well. And we will be back stronger than ever.